Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the fifth installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Last time we explored the topic of source filter nonlinearity, and today we are going to take a look at how that relates to mixed voice. The key characteristic of mixed voice is a stretching and thinning of the vocal folds, which allows them to reach higher frequencies without an increase in intensity, or equivalently reach the same frequencies with less intensity required. As the vocal folds stretch and thin, they become less able to withstand pressure and remain adducted. Thus, mixed voice typically requires an increase in medial compression, that is, squeezing the vocal folds together. This also helps with high notes on its own terms, partly because it is generally harder to maintain adequate vocal fold closure at high pitches, and partly because it facilitates acoustic transitions that would otherwise decrease the vocal fold closure. This limited amount of squeezing is generally harmless, but it is a bit less efficient than coordinations that rely less on it. More interestingly, it decreases the overall acoustic coupling between the vocal folds and the vocal tract, and it typically also goes along with less narrowing of the epiglottic funnel, thus further decreasing the coupling between the vocal folds and the vocal tract. This is in one sense very helpful as it makes the oscillation of the vocal folds less easily disturbed by changes in resonance, greatly simplifying registration. In effect, if you do not rely on resonance tuning, you have to rely on squeezing. However, this easily becomes a crutch, causing some singers to avoid chest voice even when singing loudly, opting to simply squeeze the vocal folds a bit harder instead of relying on more activity from the thyroarytenoid muscles. The advantage of this is that they will not have to worry as much about vocal tract shaping, but it tends to lack warmth and it comes at the cost of efficiency, needing much more effort to produce loud volumes. More importantly, however, this thin and pressed sound resulting from this strategy is veering dangerously close to a phenomenon I call squeezing spirals. When ascending in pitch, mixed voice gradually becomes more dramatic and belty sounding. To avoid this, it is necessary to continue the transition towards falsetto or some such. But singers who do not know how to do this, or who for whatever reason believe that falsetto ought to be avoided like the plague, may opt to simply stretch the vocal folds even thinner and make their overall coordination less acoustically efficient. This in turn requires them to add even more compression to keep the vocal folds adducted. Conversely, when going low in pitch, mixed voice tends to become rather weak, which is why it is important to be able to switch back to chest voice for lower pitches. Some singers will, however, avoid this switch, opting instead for the aforementioned strategy of using more compression and perhaps lowering the larynx a little bit to increase the volume. They thus construct a fake chest voice, so to speak, which will require them to stretch the vocal folds even further when they go back up in pitch. Also, if they try to take this fake chest voice up in pitch, they will likely be antagonizing the downward pull on the larynx instead of letting it go, so that they also experience a gradually increasing tension of their extrinsic laryngeal muscles, ultimately limiting their range of motion with regard to laryngeal elevation. Thus begins a lengthy deterioration in which the singer goes from having a rich and warm tone, but perhaps struggles with high notes to eventually having a very weak and squeezed tone and a loss of lower range, but perhaps easier high notes, which however wind up sounding thin and squeezed. This process can span several years, and while it may lead to a decline in vocal health, it is fundamentally a deterioration of technique and is not caused by vocal strain. 
Nevertheless, not understanding the cause of their vocal decline, singers caught up in squeezing spirals are likely to suspect vocal damage and book an appointment with an ENC. The subsequent laryngoscopy may show signs of vocal damage and the singer might be advised to avoid loud volumes. Ironically, such advice is likely to make the singer even more vocally timid, exacerbating the problem. In especially severe cases, the laryngoscopy may also show atrophied thyroarytenoids, perhaps even to the point of having bowed vocal folds. I am of course not suggesting that all cases of laryngeal wasting are caused by squeezing spirals. Vocal fold paresis is another possible cause and can unfortunately happen even if you are doing everything right. Although the comparatively high prevalence of such diagnosis among the light is right crowd might be suggestive of something or other. If you have become increasingly alarmed listening to this, let me reassure you that squeezing spirals do not need to be scary. They can be largely avoided by simply being sure to use chest voice for louder volumes and lower pitches. And in case you find yourself getting into a squeezing spiral by accident anyway, you can generally get out of it easily enough by going low in pitch, lowering the larynx somewhat and making moderately loud vocalizations with clear glottal onsets like this. Ah, ah, ah. Try to make the onsets very crisp and instantaneous, so to speak. If they are sounding all creaky and dragged out like this, ah, 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 then you may benefit from doing some breathy vocalizations first, still low in range and with a somewhat lowered larynx, like a sigh. Ha, ah, ha. Ah. Be sure to keep the vowel bright and clear, even though the larynx is low. It should not sound dopey, <sighs> as that will tend to encourage mixed voice. Once you have found the right sound and can produce it in a relaxed manner, you can try the previous exercise again, and you should be able to get a much clearer onset. If you go through this process correctly, it should help alleviate the squeezing spiral, but in sufficiently severe cases, it might not be able to break you out of the squeezing spiral entirely. If so, don't fret, just take a break and try again later or rest and come back to it the next day. Most importantly, don't be afraid. Squeezing spirals are not dangerous when you know what they are and what to do about them. The point of this video is not to make people scared of singing, but simply to help people who may be experiencing this particular issue or who might experience it in the future or perhaps just want a warmer tone with a wider dynamic range. And with that, we've reached the end of my three-part series on resonance. Many of these topics will be addressed again in future videos, but if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in a comment below. Stay tuned, remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching.